Hello, and welcome to the Van Build Tech Talk with Kurt. I'm Kurt, and I converted this Sprinter van into a luxurious off-grid tiny home on wheels to travel the world with snow and our two kitties, G-Money and Vanna. This is a series of van tour videos where we discuss various aspects of converting a van into your dream ticket to van life. And today, we're talking about solar. About seven months ago, I released my first video, uh, Tech Talk on solar. And in that episode, I covered things like the components that I used, the type of solar panels, um, the batteries that I used, the charge controller, and so on. And in addition, I showed you all the power of the tilt. And this is an absolute game changer for those of you who were just trying to get a little bit more solar out of your out of your current panels. And so I have a huge solar system. And so it makes a huge difference for me, but can even make a difference for the smaller systems. And so I covered that and showed you that. Um, and, and that was pretty powerful, I think. And I got a lot of questions about that. And then I also covered my huge upstairs attic and storage and light storage um, on top of the van and that all kind of works as one system and I kind of uh, detailed some of that and so that's what I covered in my in my my initial solar tech talk and I got a lot of over the last six months I've gotten a lot of questions and comments and I wanted to come back and do a video and answer your comments and give you some more details. It's clear that there's a lot of you out there who saw the value of the tilt, who are looking at solar and wanting to get um, incorporate some of these ideas into your system. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail today and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. And so uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna talk mostly about the attic and the tilt. Um, I'm gonna come back and do a follow-up video on the attic itself because there's a lot of details and a lot of questions specific to that. And then I'll come back and do another video. I got a lot of questions about what types of battery, batteries I use and, and, and that type of thing in charge controllers. So I'm gonna do another specific episode on this. And so I'm going to start talking about the tilt. So one of the keys to the tilt is a linear actuator. And these linear actuators, I, they're, they're really cool. I never worked one with them before on this project, but I've seen them used for all sorts of things, from lifting up televisions, to lifting up hatch doors, to gates, to opening up drawers, and they're so versatile, and there's so many things you can do with them, and um, who knows, maybe you can use them in your van build, but what I wanted to do is start by telling you, explaining to you what a linear actuator is, and how they work and while I do this I'm going to be answering a lot of the questions that you guys have had in the comments specific to this topic but these are these are key in making my tilting solar system work and so here I'm going to put up a little diagram and I'm going to tell you how these work and so if you can see on the diagram these have a a little motor on them and then they have a gearbox and so what happens is when that motor kicks on it turns turns the gears in the gearbox, which in turn turns the lead screw. And the lead screw is a big threaded rod, if you will. And so as the motor turns, that threads and that pushes out the actuator and extends that out is what gives you the length and the extension. Now I should say that the linear actuators come in all sorts of different sizes and they come in all different kinds of uh, power, meaning they can, some of them can push thousands and thousands of pounds. And so um, when you choose a linear actuator, you want to kind of take these things into consideration. But the way it works is, so once that, that motor kicks on and that thread starts going out, there's a limit switch. And what happens is, is when that linear actuator gets fully extended, it makes contact with that linear switch and cuts it off automatically. Now the same happens when you reverse it and you pull that thing back and close, and close it. When it gets to the end, there's another limit switch and so that will automatically cut, out, cut, cut off. Now, in most systems, you can turn them on and off manually. Now, some linear actuators, some of the more sophisticated linear actuators, are actually programmable. 
meaning you can set that limit switch wherever, wherever you want. It's an adjustable limit switch, if you will. And so then you can control how far you open it and how far you close it automatically. Now, in my case, I did not use the, uh, the automated one. I used the most basic linear actuator, and I'll actually show you which ones I used right here, and I'll put a link in the description so you can see what they use. But I used an 18-inch linear actuator, which means that'll extend 18 inches uh, beyond its, its closed position. Now, the linear actuator really requires a hinge point to work. And now let me explain this to you. So what happens is the motor is, in my case, is 12 volt. You can get them 12 volt, 24 volt. I'm sure you can get them 110 and 240 as well. But uh, the 12 volt wires go back to my remote uh, control box. And so when I push my button uh, to open that, that'll send a signal to the motor and that'll extend it out. Now if I push that button again, it'll stop. If I let it go all the way until it hits the limit switch, it'll stop automatically. And so that's, in a nutshell, how the linear actuator works. Now, if we back up a bit, the linear actuator needs something else. It needs a, whatever it's lifting or whatever it's pushing, it needs to have, in my case, since I'm doing a tilt, it needs to have a hinge point. And so the hinge point is critical because when it pushes, right, when it pushes, you don't want the back side, one side, to pull away. You want it to kind of be fixed there, and so it'll actually lift and tilt that. And so there's been a lot of questions in my case is, can I tilt both ways? And so in my case, the hinge point the hinge is fixed along an entire side of my attic or my the box that I have on top of the roof. That is the hinge point. So it runs almost the whole length of, of the band. And so I have six panels and so you know they're mounted, yeah, they're they're mounted on that top panel, and the hinge point is such that when the linear actuator pushes and extends it has no choice but to go up, and that's kind of how they work. And so it would not be, with a fixed hinge point, I can't simply have another actuator going the other way to tilt it the other way. And so several people have asked if I can have a dynamic tilting system that tilts either way, or can I tilt mine the other way? The answer is the way I have it configured, no. Could you do it? Absolutely. With engineering, you can do anything. Uh, another question that I get a lot about, about the tilting solar panels is how much space do I need under the panels to actually put the tilt? So let me put the question another way. In my case, I have the attic, which is about, I think it's about 12 inches. And so my panels are actually about 12 inches above the van. I did that because I wanted my max air fans to be able to open up and they need about 10 inches of clearance. So without tilting my panels, my max air fans will open up and, and they'll function perfectly. Uh, and then also that gives me that attic space up top. But there's a lot of you who want to keep your solar panels more stealth, closer to the van, not so high, not so elevated. You're not interested in the additional storage space, but you, you are interested in the tilt. And so, by all means, you can implement that, and I would encourage you to implement that, because I've seen many stories, many videos of van lifers out there who just need to squeeze a bit more out of their, out of their 100, 200, 400 watt systems, and this is a great way to do it. Now, when the, you do want a bit of an angle on your actual, in your actuator to get it to actually tilt. And so in addition to the hinge point, so what you need to do is figure out how you're going to put in your hinge point, and then you'd want to mount your, uh, your linear actuator below that, and then up onto the solar panel so it can tilt a single or a couple solar panels. It probably would take, 
again, depending on which linear actuator you get, it will probably take three or four additional inches. But just remember, you do want a bit of an angle. You don't want the linear actuator to be level necessarily um, with that. If you can get just a little bit of angle on that, it really helps kind of pop it up, push it down, and hold it down as well. You could definitely incorporate linear actuators in your current solar systems and uh, one or two paddles and get a lot more distance out of it, and that's how you would do that. And then. You know, the remote option is huge for me. I have a lot of people, you know, say they do it manually, and obviously that requires getting up on the van and all that other stuff. Now, I do have, I should mention that I do have a safety latch. And so basically, once the panels are closed, yes, the linear actuators hold those down pretty tight. And people have asked how this system holds up and when. You know, we drive 60, 70 miles an hour, and we put 30,000 miles on the bed. And the one thing that we have incorporated um, just as a security method is a safety latch to hold those down. So it's very durable with the wind, but I would encourage you to have some sort of safe second safety latch to hold those down so you're not relying solely on those linear actuators. Another question that I get concerning the tilt is, when they're tilted, obviously the attic is open. Does that leave all the stuff in there insecure? Is there another way to close that? So in my configuration, I do not leave them open when I say I go hiking or camping or whatever. But if you wanted to tilt and still while you're off camping for the day or whatever, what I would recommend is actually putting a secure cover underneath the solar panels but still on top of the attic to give you that uh, extra security so people couldn't reach in there and grab your stuff. Now I am going to do a tech talk that's going to cover uh, specifics on the attic, you know, how I construct it. I get a lot of questions in terms of how I attach that to the van, what kind of um, parts that I use to, to make all that and so on and so forth, the security, the safety latch. And so I'm going to do a video detailing uh, the attic because it has been much better than we anticipated uh, when we initially started in terms of storage. Having that additional storage is absolutely um, a game changer. So that's pretty much the story on the tilt. I just want to remind you that not only do we get more capacity um, when we're tilted, but especially in the morning and the evening times uh, when we're not getting much solar out, now all of a sudden we're getting a couple more hours of solar during the day. And uh, a lot of times that's a game changer for us. And some people will say, well, why do you need to do that? You know, you don't need that much solar. Well, we run all electrics in our van. So, you know, we run electric stove, electric oven, we run air conditioner, uh, we run UV light filters, we run, uh, we have two water systems. So we have a recirculating shower and a fresh water system, so all the pumps. And just all the things that we use, we use a lot of energy. And so we have a large bit of, battery bank and so sometimes squeezing that little extra juice out of there is necessary and so if that's something you're interested in take a look at these linear actuators and oh by the way I would also consider you know other projects you could do with them so I know a lot of people um, have day beds and night beds and so you might be able to use a linear actuator to actually automate that process or if you want to tuck a TV away or use it to open a drawer or push out, uh, push out a shelf or something like that. They have a lot of capabilities. I'm gonna put the links in the description so you guys can check those out. But if you have any more questions, please let me know. I have another video coming out very soon about the attic. So actually that's mostly gonna focus on the construction, the attaching of that attic. And then I have another one, as I said, coming out on the lithium ion batteries. and. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a pretty good video. And then also I have one coming on the second alternator, so I get a lot of questions about that. So thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, please hit the like button. If you have any questions on any other topics, you know we cover a bunch of topics in these uh, tech talks, and a lot of them actually come from your questions. So appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Stay safe, guys. 
If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. If you want to help support our videos, be sure to check out our Patreon page, where you can join the journey and see some behind-the-scenes action. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys in a few days. I can feel the sun.